I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one nation, indivisible, one indivisible.
statues, structures, and sites in our state, serving as a visible indication that Texans appreciate their heritage involving the heroes that laid the foundation for us today. Markers provide information to us and to tourists about Texas' rich heritage. In 1935, the Texas Legislature created the Committee of Control for the Texas Centennial Celebration to acknowledge the 100th anniversary of Texas, independence from Mexico. The state created, acquired, and built 1,100 exhibition buildings, memorial museums, statues, and granite and bronze markers around Texas. Fort Bend County received 13 of these granite markers. And this is just the only one maybe you've ever seen, but now that you see them, you'll know they're 1936. It was located originally behind the levee, back towards the river, for this spot. And for you, of those of you who are uh, associated with Hutchinson Elementary School, you're on Jane Long's land. We thank you for coming today. I would like to introduce one person who's been Jane Long over the years. <laughs> Good afternoon. Jane Long, called the mother of Texas, was born in Maryland in 1798 to General William Wilkinson and Annie Dent Wilkinson. She married Dr. James Long, whom she'd chosen as a guardian, in 1815, and they settled near Natchez, Mississippi. Their first daughter, Anne, was born a year later. Dr. Long was kind of a wanderer kind of guy. He didn't stay in one place very long. And soon thereafter, he became leader of an effort to free Texas from Spanish rule. He gathered forces and entered Texas, taking Nacogdoches. Along the way, Jane and their two daughters were left with her sister. Another daughter, Rebecca, had been born by this time. Eventually, Jane joined her husband in Nacogdoches, but before long, the Spanish pushed the group back to Louisiana. Dr. Long then mounted another expedition to Texas and landed at Bolivar Point. There, Jane, Anne, and a servant girl, Cayenne, were left with a few others and a small amount of provisions while the rest of the expedition proceeded to Goliad. Unfortunately, by this time, Rebecca had passed away. It was on Bolivar Point that the Lively, carrying the first of Austin's colonists, found Jane Long still waiting for her husband to return. The others had abandoned the crusade and returned east. The captain of the Lively gave her more supplies as Jane refused to leave with him, instead choosing to continue to wait for James to come back to her. She gave birth to another daughter, Mary, in 1821, all by herself. Mary would only live to the age of four and Jane remained at Bolivar, scaring off any Indians that came near until she received news in 1822 that her husband had been captured by the Spanish at Goliad and then killed by Mex Mexican revolutionaries in Mexico City. This sad news prompted her to leave the coast and settle on the San Jacinto River near friendly families. She stayed there a short time. By 1825, she established a boarding house in San Felipe and entertained any number of important people. In 1832, she moved to Brazoria and opened a boarding house there that was frequented by Stephen F. Austin, Mirabeau Lamar, the New Orleans Grays, and others, including Sam Houston and David Burnett. A ball was held there for Austin after he was freed from imprisonment in Mexico. In 1827, Stephen F. Austin confirmed Jane Long's Headright League in what would become Richmond, where we're standing today, among other parts. Her headright also called the Fort Lee because it included Old Fort Bend, bordered William Morton's property and the Brazos River to the north, Joseph Kukendall's property and the river to the east, and at that time uninhabited property to the west and the south. She later sold part of that headright to Robert Eden Candy, who founded Richmond in 1837. Long didn't move to her land until 1837, when she had saved enough money 
to build a home near Old Fort Bend, begin cultivation of a plantation, and open a hotel in Richmond. The hotel was located on 4th Street between Morton and Railroad Streets. While in Richmond, Jane Long struck up a friendship with Mirabeau Lamar, to whom she sold part of her property in 1835. Lamar's property was where the Justice Center in this and surrounding area is now. Lamar built his home there, though he only lived in the area sparingly. However, Lamar knew Jane since her days in Brazoria and was taken with her. He wrote a poem for her dedicated to Bonnie Jane. The moon, the cold chaste moon, my love, is riding in the sky. And like a bridal veil, my love, the clouds are floating by. Oh, brighter than that planet, love, thy face appears to me. But when shall I behold its light through bridal drapery? We owe our gratitude, my love, to Saul's enlivening ray. And yet I praise the moonlight, love, above the glare of day. O oh, Bonnie Jane, thou art to me what e'er in both is best. Thou art the moonbeam to mine eye, the sunbeam to my breast. Jane and Mirabeau eventually had a falling out due to disagreements they had in a business relationship. Lamar then changed the poem to inscribe it to a Miss Anna Truesdell instead of Jane. <laughs> Soon Jane's plantation prospered in the fertile Fort Bend County soil and she paid off all of her debts. She had some accumulating since her husband had passed away. In 1850, her plantation was valued at more than $10,000. Long was supportive of the Confederate efforts, efforts during the Civil War and would wear nothing not made in the South. She even wore a palmetto hat that she made and trimmed. Her homespun dresses were of cotton, grown, ginned, spun, woven, and dyed on her own plantation. She sewed and knitted furiously to help fill the boxes the rich women sent their soldiers. Jane's daughter Anne married Edward Winston, lived in Richmond, and had a son James. Anne died in 1870, having married Judge J.S. Sullivan after Mr. Winston passed away. Anne and James Sullivan had four children. Jane Long remained in Richmond for the rest of her life, never remarrying, despite rumors of her famous would-be suitors that included Ben Milam, Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, and Mirabeau Lamar. She was attended to by Cayenne's daughter, Clarissa, and Cayenne, daughter of Clarissa, and granddaughter of the Cayenne, who had faithfully served Jane for so long. Jane's curly hair had grayed by this time, and she wore a cap, always retaining her sense of humor and zest for life. She smoked a pipe using tobacco, grown in a field near her house, and was very particular about the quality of it. Jane Long died in Richmond in December 1880 at the age of 82 and is buried in Morton Cemetery. She was called the mother of Texas because she was one of the first Anglo women in Texas to have a child. There you go. Now, if everybody will come around here, oh. we need the marker. Or you can stay where you are and Charles Kelly will read it for you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'll do my best. <clears throat> The uh, text on the other side of the marker reads, uh, text on the other side of the marker reads as follows. The site of the home of the pioneer Anglo-American woman to Texas, Mrs. Jane Herbert Wilkinson Long, 1789 to 1880, wife of Dr. James Long, leader of an expedition in 1819, whose purpose was to free Texas from Spanish rule. Uh, they, it says also that the uh, marker was erected by the state of Texas in 1936. Thank you, Charles. Yes. At this time, the marker dedication. This marker is a game. Robert Wilkinson dedicated to the memory of this remarkable woman who received her land grant in this area, built her home here, had a boarding house in Richmond, and is considered the mother of Texas. May we be ever mindful of the heritage given us by the early settlers as we acknowledge it today to document this heritage in the future with this state historical moment. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah.